Welcome to Education Forum. I'm Herman Badillo, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University. The improvement of education affects all New Yorkers. This program will focus on the key educational issues and challenges before us all. My guest today is Dr. Antonio Perez, who is president of the Borough of Manhattan Community College of the City University. Uh, Dr. Perez was born in Puerto Rico, and he came here as a child. He went to the New York City public schools and began his uh, education in the colleges at Bronx Community College. He then went to the uh, State University of New York at Anianta, where he got a bachelor's degree in the social sciences. And then he went to the State University in Albany, where he got a master's degree and a doctor of education in counseling uh, services. And he is he has been the president of Borough Manhattan Community College. And uh, Dr. Perez, I welcome you. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the Borough Manhattan Community College. Where is it located? How many students does it have? What's the uh, ethnic background of the student body? And what kind of courses do you give? Um, well, it's really a pleasure being here uh, as your guest. We're located at 199 Chamber Street. We also have another facility on West Broadway at Finman Hall, and we offer courses uh, throughout the borough of Manhattan, uh, especially now we're offering courses at the Teresa Hotel uh, in Harlem. We have about uh, a little bit over 16,000 students, and of uh, that student body, we have about 43% uh, of our students are African American, 31% are Hispanic, and about 10% are Asian, and the balance are white. Uh, we're an institution that it's a um, two-year college providing the transfer courses for those students who want to take the initial two years and transfer to a four-year college. But then we also provide career program courses in the allied health, nursing, respiratory therapy, and many of our business programs in accounting and business management are very, very popular. So we find that our students are very successful, and those are the programs where we find the greatest concentration as well as in our telemedia uh, courses where our students are involved in cable communications as well. What are the requirements uh, if I wanted to go to Borough Manhattan Community College? Well, you just have to be a uh, high school graduate, and in order to enroll in credit-bearing courses, you'd have to pass the CUNY exams so that any student who's hi a high school graduate is eligible to attend uh, the Borough Manhattan Community College. Okay, and uh, what special programs do you have? For example, uh, uh, you mentioned the building at uh, Fitterman Hall. I remember in 1993, uh, we were all stunned when that building was dona donated to the Borough Manhattan Community College. Uh, what is that building being used for now? Well, we're in the process now of spending close to $52 million to renovate the building and make it available uh, for our, our students. The main campus on 199 Chamber Street was only uh, made uh, available to provide uh, courses for about 7,500 students so that we've really been overbooked at our present location. So we're in the process of renovating that facility. And part of what we're doing there is also uh, creating a virtual library, which will be on the first three floors of the building. And it will be a library without books, uh, and it will provide internet access for our students as well as the community. This is a, a, uh, one, of the, uh, one of its kind in the United States. And when you say as well as the community, you mean anybody can Anybody, you, that's correct. Anywhere, from anywhere in the that, city? That's correct. It's, it's going to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it is our intent to provide this as, as open access library to the when community. When will that be open? Well, we were hoping that it would be open by this coming uh, September uh, of the year 2000. That's really what our goal is at this point. Uh, we've had to update it because there have been some uh, changes in our renovation plan. But it's a facility that we feel not only will enhance that opportunity for us, but we're also using one of the other floors uh, to create a, a telemedia a accelerator. And that's uh, we have entered in a relationship with uh, Bear Stearns Constellation Ventures and the Silos Corporation. And they are leasing one of our floors and spending about a million dollars to renovate it. This is a floor that, unfortunately, even though we did get uh, significant funding to renovate the building, was not sufficient to venerate that particular floor. So we're going to, in essence, mothball that floor. But instead of mothballing it, we entered into agreement with them and the New York City Investment Fund that they will renovate that floor and create office space for the new video digital technology uh, media so that in, if they're small startup companies that need a facility, they can lease that space from them. And what will happen is our students will be able to serve as interns and learn about this new video 
uh, digital technology as well. Well, the, the area where you are in downtown Manhattan is the uh, Silicon Alley, in effect, of uh, New York City, where a lot of new businesses have sprung up in the last few years, um, precisely dealing with technology so that you will be involved in that process, right? Absolutely, and it provides our students uh, the opportunity to be kind of on the ground floor of, this, of the development of these, this new technology. But I, what I find even more beneficial is that they're using the facility we were, that we were not going to be able to use. They're going to pay us a, uh, uh, for the use of that facility, but we also will have a, um, a part ownership, 5% ownership in those companies that are going to be successful uh, that will be there. So this is another source of income that we can use to provide better services for our students. Now, one of the um, criticisms that the mayor has made and other people have made is that uh, very few students graduate from a community college, including your community college, in a period of two years. What is your answer to that criticism? Well, uh, th that's a national-wide concern. And uh, while we realize it's a national concern, we also have to respond to the community and to, obviously, the mayor and others who feel it's important that we as a community college be able to graduate students within that two-year frame. Uh, we have adopted a new program called Out Into at BMCC where we're going to try to help those individuals who really want to graduate in two years but because of financial constraints we're not able to do so with a, a scholarship so that if they are successful the first semester they attend our school and are able to show progression toward completing within two years, we'll give them a $500 scholarship each semester so that then they can alleviate that need to possibly work and then complete their education within uh, two years. We're investing $100,000 right now, and we're also looking for additional sponsors and corporate support to be able to expand such a program. See, what I always advise uh, people to do is to get their education out of the way as soon as possible, even if they have to uh, work two or three jobs. You know, I was working full-time when I was going to City College and studying accounting, and uh, I was working full-time when I was going to Brooklyn Law School so that even though I came here from Puerto Rico when I was about 12 and couldn't speak the language, by the time I was 25, I was already a lawyer and a CPA. And uh, I find that young people who defer uh, their education uh, tend not to graduate because they get married, they have children, so that uh, I always tell them to make sure that even if they have to go without sleep, <laughs> that uh, they uh, get your, their education out of the way as fast as possible. Now, you have developed a lot of new programs uh, uh, in Upper Manhattan. You mentioned the Hotel Teresa, which, of course, is a very famous hotel right. uh, for many reasons. <laughs> so what exactly are you doing there? Well, uh, my concern uh, when I became president of the Birmingham Community College was that we're really physically located primarily down on 199 Chamber Street. And uh, my concern was, how do we service the whole borough? We are the only community college in Manhattan, and we have that responsibility. So we really looked at our community really in four segments. We looked at the business community where we're currently located at 199 Chamber Street, and you have obviously Wall Street and the large corporations. Then f a few steps further, you have Chinatown, and then you have Harlem, and then you have Washington Heights. So we have really looked at our community from that perspective. So we began by offering uh, some courses in 1997 at the Teresa Hotel. We started with just uh, four courses. We're up to now 20 courses, and we have uh, over 200 students taking... What, what kind of courses well, you offer? What we found out is we did a survey of the community, and they indicated they were very much interested in business-type courses, business management, business law, computer courses. So those are the types of courses. We were really trying to provide them with the initial courses so that then if they had an interest, they can come back on down to the main campus to take additional courses. But we're finding a greater demand from Harlem and from Washington Heights that we provide them with greater uh, number of credit-bearing courses. Well, I certainly uh, find uh, among the uh, business leaders that uh, they feel they would like to have more students who are graduates of CUNY because, as you know, the area where there has been an expansion of services has been in business services. Mm -hmm. So we need to get uh, those young people into jobs that exist because the employers tell me that they're getting people now who are coming in from uh, far reaches of uh, New Jersey and uh, Rockland County and Nassau and Suffolk. And when they come in in the morning, they're already exhausted. So I'd like to get some <laughs> of the people from Manhattan who can not only come in fresh after a 20-minute ride, but who can, if necessary, uh, stay and work late because that's many times is required. But in addition to the Teresa Hotel, 
we are now developing, uh, in conjunction with the Cisco industry, uh, a, a program for those individuals who don't necessarily want to go to college but have at least a 10th grade reading level and a 10th grade math level. And this is a program where we will be able to, to train them to become network specialists in the computer industry. So that, for example, in the old days when you didn't want to go to college and or weren't sure about going to college but you wanted a skill, the new computer industry has what's comparable to being an electrician or a plumber, these network specialists who don't necessarily have to go to college, but after training with us and doing an internship of at least six months, they could earn up to $40,000 a year. And we received a FIPSI grant from the federal government, and we're only one of 24 colleges in the country received this grant in order to take this program into the empowerment zone. It's the only such program in the country that's currently going to be in an empowerment zone to try to provide certain skills that are necessary to the corporate community with individuals that be trained to, to be a network specialist. Are any of the high schools in New York City doing that? Well, some of them are doing it. Uh, I know that um, near us uh, uh, it was being done, but not to the extent that we're doing it. We're doing it to the point where we're going to actually get, get them ready and get jobs. So we're, what we did was we did a survey with the corporate community and said, if we train these individuals, do you have jobs available? And the response was yes. So we're going to take the next step is train them and then and find them jobs. What is there within uh, BMCC or anywhere within the city university, any kind of uh, service that shows what the jobs are going to be in the next 10 well, years in New York City? Absolutely. We have a career development center that has, we've got the research, we project uh, what the jobs are going to be, and we work with our students. But not only that, we have within the college uh, a business trends analysis uh, um, department where we produce uh, data for the, the corporate community. It, it, we've done it recently for the downtown business community where we've done an analysis to find out where the jobs are going to be and what their needs are going to be. So what's your projection of the jobs, say, in the next 15 years? Well, I, I would say that the computer industry will continue to flourish. But not only that, but we have to produce individuals that are articulate and people that can think on their own. And that's key. And so that what we're doing is we're making sure that they're not just technically oriented and technically skilled, but individuals that are thinkers and are able to articulate what they think and you be able that to they can read and write oh, abso properly. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's what the, that's what we're told constantly by employers. We want individuals that can think independently and are able to read and write and can articulate thoughts to us. And what's unfortunate is that that's where there's been a decrease and a major concern in the corporate community that the people that they're hiring may have the degrees but cannot articulate or cannot read and write to the extent that they need to, in order to communicate uh, at the level that they need. And that's, that's precisely what we at the Board of Trustees are concerned about, mm -hmm. that our students uh, be able to read and write and think properly uh, when they get a diploma so that they can be hired. But we'll be talking about that immediately after these announcements. Take Simmons. Yeah. Give me Jones. Anderson. Smith. Lightfoot. Bishop. Hernandez. Swifka. Harris. Lavender. Uh, Peavy. Yes. In the game of life, you've got a much better chance at getting picked for a cool job with great pay if you take algebra, geometry, and calculus. You need to know how math can improve your future. Demand it. Call NACME. We'll tell you. My guest today is Dr. Antonio Perez, who is the president of the Borough of Manhattan Community College. Dr. Perez, we were talking about the fact that the business community requires these days people who are able to think clearly and who can read and write and put a sentence and a paragraph together. And that's the problem that uh, I'm trying to deal with uh, at the level of the Board of Trustees on the issue of remediation, because we find that uh, about 87% of the students who come into the community colleges need remediation in reading, writing, or arithmetic. What would you say is the percentage at BMCC? I'd say probably it's consistent with that. Probably, I think it's closer to eight, about 82%, it, uh, somewhere around there. But That's still a very high percentage. It's still very high, yes. And, and what that means is that they have not gotten, even though they may have a high school diploma, they have not gotten the uh, kind of education that they should be having for a 12th grade uh, diploma, and that means they need remedial work at uh, the Borough of Manhattan Community College. What programs are you planning to uh, uh, have in the next few years to deal with this? 
Well, the thing is, we currently have an immersion program that uh, is providing that during the summer for, for our students to try to get them ready before they arrive. Because what we find is that because our students tend to be older, they've been away from the books for quite a while. So with the summer immersion program, that tends to help some of them try to, to minimize the amount of remediation. Our concern is obviously when a student enrolls in a, in a college course, and if it's a remedial course, they have to use their financial aid. So we're looking for ways to minimize the expense a student has to, to put out in order to take these uh, non-credit courses. So that we're working uh, and trying to get them done during that time frame as well as during the uh, winter session. So we try to minimize the amount that our students have to, have to take. But we're also working closely with the high schools to try to make sure that the students are aware ahead of time of what they're going to be tested on. So for example, our College Now program uh, uh, the high schools, the students for BMCC come primarily from Manhattan high schools or from all over the city? Uh, surprisingly, 40% of our students come from Brooklyn mm -hmm. because of our current location, obviously being primarily near, near uh, Brooklyn. That's where our students come from. But the younger students, uh, for example, a lot of students come from George Washington High School and from the Heights, so that a lot of our younger students come from Manhattan. Because we're located where we are, Many people who work in the area, especially who live in Brooklyn, will take our courses. And that's what you'll find, that they really have two different populations. During the day, it's a younger population. In the evening, people are coming in from work, and that's, that's a different population coming into the college as well. Yeah, in the College Now program, what I'm trying to do is work it out with the uh, president of the Board of Education and Chancellor Crew so that uh, we go into each and every high school uh, in the ninth grade and begin to work with the students testing them in the ninth grade to uh, see to it that uh, we can help them so they need less remedial education when they uh, graduate. Well, we just got an upward bound grant which will allow us to work with ninth grade students during the summer. And this is a way, another way of us responding to that issue of concern. We bring them onto the campus. We provide them with academic training as well. So we're looking for ways of partnering with the school system to help those students be better prepared once they arrive to us. Now, the other thing that you mentioned, the question of students um, losing out on their financial assistance, I'm trying to get the state legislature to agree that the students should not have to pay for remedial education because it's not their fault mm -hmm. that they got a poor education in high school. And what happens is students drop out because if they have to charge that to their tuition assistance plan, the remedial semesters, then they... Uh, end up using up their uh, financial assistance before they graduate and they drop out. So that if we can get the state legislature to agree that remedial work should be free, then they would not have the problem of using up the tuition assistance. That would be fantastic if, if you can get that done for well, our students. If we can get some of you people in the business community to support yes, us yes, yes. Uh, in Albany mm -hmm. uh, because we hope to introduce the bill in the coming session of the legislature. And, uh, and try to get it through. Uh, but that brings me up to another program that you have, and that is one that you worked out with Solomon Smith Barney. Tell us about that. Well, what we did was Solomon Smith Barney are across the street from our 199 Chamber Street campus, and we were involved with them uh, in trying to get them to support us financially in regards to scholarships, et cetera. And whenever you go to a corporation, you just hate to just kind of go with hands out and asking for them to, to help you. We, we met with them, and we said, we need your support, but how can we help you? And they had a, a similar need that you shared with earlier, and that they have employees who have never gone uh, or taken college credit courses. And they said, could we partner so that uh, you can offer our employees uh, who are at the entry level area, who have never been to college, college bearing courses. So what they did was, we worked with them to screen employees, and now we have over 100 Smith Barney employees who are our students. We initially taught the courses at their facility, and now they come and take the courses with us on our campus. And we just had three students graduate uh, this past graduating class from Smith Barney. Our goal is to take this program and replicate this throughout the downtown com mm -hmm. business community. So we're discussing now with Goldman Sachs and others about the possibility of providing the same program to them. Because as I shared with you earlier, we look at our as four communities, the downtown business community, Chinatown, um, Harlem and uh, Washington Heights as communities we need to service. Well, you have a tremendous advantage uh, because of the location. Absolutely. See, uh, I had something to do with that, you should know, because <laughs> uh, when I was a housing commissioner in the Wagner administration, there was a uh, 
a uh, market there in that particular mm -hmm. area. And I relocated to them to Hunts Point. And for many years, uh, we could not find any, any, anyone to take over that space. And when I became deputy mayor under uh, Edward Koch, I suggested that we use that space for a uh, community college. And that's how the Borough of Manhattan Community College got started. But I felt then, this was in 1978, that would be a great location because then you could work with the entire financial community and the financial center and in the Wall Street area. And I'm glad to hear that it's working out that way. It is because it is our goal to become the premier urban community college in this country. And our location is going to have a lot to do with that, our success in becoming that. Yes, and I know that you've been working with a uh, uh, number of people in the Rudin family, mm -hmm. for example, uh, to develop these programs. And they've told me that uh, they're very enthusiastic about it. But the main thing that I wanted to discuss with you today is a program that you developed uh, called Prelude to Success. Because uh, in the remediation resolution that I developed and the Board of Trustees approved, we said that at the senior colleges, we wanted to limit uh, remediation so that the students would not be matriculated unless they were able to read and write uh, English and to do arithmetic at the 12th grade level. And we found that there would be a problem with students who might need just a little bit of help to uh, enable them to stay at a senior college. And uh, you came up with a proposal. You came to my office some months ago, and I was uh, uh, very glad you did because uh, uh, the proposal that you worked out with uh, President David Caputo at Hunter College is a proposal which we now hope to expand. So tell us how you would deal with the problem. Well, our, our concern was that uh, we as a, as a community college, our mission is really to take a student from whatever point they are to the next point that they really wish to achieve. And my feeling is that a community college, if a student's goal is to go to a four-year college and they need a mi minimal transition, then we will work with that. So I uh, discussed this with President Caputo, and we said, how can we work together on this? But we also want to make sure that it wasn't perceived that the community college has become a remediation mill. So what this program entails is if a student has a deficiency in his application, uh, once they're tested in order to try to go to their college, four-year college of choice, then we will provide our faculty and support services on that campus for that individual to take our courses with our faculty. Not only will they take the remediation course, but they'll take credit-bearing courses that we have picked together with our faculties. And then a student then spends a semester with us on the campus of their choice, be it Hunter, be it City, be it Baruch or Lehman. We will be there with our faculty. And then once they have passed those courses, then they make the clean transition right into the campus of their choice so that there is no stigma. Well, uh, I wanted to get into Hunter, I wanted to get into Lima, but I can't get in. You're on the campus, you're a BNCC student, but you now can avail yourselves of the facilities at BNCC and the facilities also at, at the so college. The student will technically <coughs> be registered at BMCC. That's correct. They are BMCC. But they will be going, let's say, to Hunter College. Right. If they want to be uh, social workers or whatever, so that from the point of view of the student body, uh, no one need know what, uh, who they are. That, that's correct. A student really does not carry a sign saying, I'm this student or that student. A student is just taking their, their BMCC courses at that particular four-year college, and upon the completion, successful completion of, of those requirements, they're right in there. And if, if they feel that they want to be identified as a Hunter College student, they just, because they'll be able to have both IDs. It's not as if they just identify it as BMCC students. Now, on that subject, how many or what percentage of the students that uh, um, graduate from BMCC, go on to senior colleges at CUNY? Uh, I don't have the exact percentages. Approximately. Uh, I, I'd say maybe uh, 18 to 20 percent. But the thing is, it's the college of choice. And it doesn't mean that's, I'm sorry, that they're the ones that they would go immediately and make that mm -hmm. transition. Some will wait a while and then make the transition. But the college of choice for most of our students are the CUNY colleges. What I have found in recent uh, months uh, is that four-year private colleges want our students as well. I recently uh, had a visit from Adelphi, a visit from um, the, the uh, uh, New York. Well, that was probably Matt Goldstein, <laughs> who is now a chancellor. So. <laughs> but uh, what they're saying to us, the four-year private college is saying, listen, 
we want to partner with the community colleges because we know, besides the stigma that, that's arisen over this whole issue, they know we, pro we produce good students and they'd like to have our students. And they say that they would partner with us so they would have dual admissions uh, uh, so that if a student could be accepted at the same time to Delphi and BNCC, once they finish their two years, they're in automatically. And other private colleges are doing the same thing. In other words, you have a prelude to success program in effect with <laughs> other universities other than well, CUNY. I, what I find is that, that our, our students are being better recognized and I think that probably because of all that discussions have taken place that there's a realization that a change is, is, is at hand and the students are becoming better prepared and they want our students. Well, I know that you have many other programs but unfortunately we're out of time so thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, You can reach us by email at our website, www.cunytv.cuny.edu, or write to us at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. We look forward to hearing from you.